In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint with light inside of Photoshop. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com and today I'm going to show you how to transform a flat photo by adding light and painting with light. So here we have a multi-shot HDR panorama that I shot with my drone in the beautiful city of Atlanta, Georgia. So we can see right now, it's just kind of a flat photo and I haven't really added a lot of the depth yet. So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So I wanna create a brand new layer. So go down to the new layer icon, but don't click on it yet. Hold down the Alt or the Option key and now click create a new layer and this will give me options. So I'm just gonna call it light. And this is gonna be our light layer. Now let's change the blending mode down here we're going to change it to overlay blending mode and click OK. So now we have this light layer and this is what I'm going to paint on. So I'm going to click here in the toolbar, grab my brush tool, hit the D key to reset the foreground background colors. Now I want white as the foreground color, hit the X key and this will give me white as the foreground. Let's go and choose the brush. So under here, I want to use a nice soft round brush and make sure the blend mode is set to normal for the brush because we've got the blend mode here in the layer. So we don't have to do anything in the brush. I'm going to hit the two key and it's going to drop it down to about 20% opacity. Now, if you tap a number key, you can change the brush opacity quickly. The six key will make it 60, zero will make it 100, one will make it 10, and two will make it 20. Now, if I want to do, say, 15, I just type in 15 and we can change the opacity right there. I like to keep the flow at 100 and just work off a lower opacity. Great. So what we want to do now is we want to have the feeling of light kind of coming in here. Now, if you are using a pressure sensitive tablet, such as a Wacom tablet, click on the brush settings. This little box here will open it. And then what I want to do is make sure all the dynamics are turned off except for transfer. And I have that set to pen pressure for opacity. So that means if I press harder, it will be more of that effect. And if I press lighter, it will be less of the effect and enables me to blend it together. If you're working with the mouse, then just make sure that you keep your opacity nice and low around 10 to 15%. So I could go a little higher if I wanted, but in this case, I'm not going to. All right, let's make my brush a little bit bigger and I'm just tapping the bracket keys on the keyboard. Left bracket key makes it smaller, right bracket key makes it bigger. The other option is if you hit the control option key and drag to the side, you can change the size of our brush that way. And if we go up and down, we can change the hardness. Now on Windows, that's gonna be Alt right drag. All right. That looks good. So we're going to create some light just kind of coming in here and hitting this area. I think it'd be kind of nice. We're imagining the light coming from this area here and it's going to come and hit these trees. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start off, first of all, just painting very lightly with this white and I'm just adding this. So you can't see a lot happening just yet. Let's just do a little bit here. And if you're wondering if anything's happening before, and after you can see, we're starting to build it up. So I like to start for very low opacity. In fact, let's make this brush bigger and just slowly build this up. So I'm just flooding this area for some light. And then we'll do some individual painting in a little bit. So it doesn't look like we've done a lot yet, does it? But if we look at it before and after you can see, yeah, we definitely are. Now I wanna up the opacity to about 30%. So I'm gonna tap the three key and let's make the brush a little bit smaller using the same method that we used before. Just dragging there. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start to paint into some of the front faces of these trees. Now, as I do this, what it's gonna do is it's gonna do a couple of things. It's gonna start to add that light, giving it more direction. And what it's also gonna do is it's gonna start to shape the trees a little bit. So 
this is a, achieving those two purposes here. So we're adding depth and we're adding a little bit of dynamicism. So if we look at it here, let's look at it before and after you can see we're really bringing this into gear. In fact, I'm gonna increase the brush opacity to about 50% just for the sake of speed. Now in the real world, I would go at about 30% and I would very, very slowly build this up. But I'm gonna do it quickly just so you can kind of see. Um, so it's not gonna be quite the high quality that I would do in my finished product, but I think you guys, it'll be good for educational purposes. So see what I'm doing is I'm having that light hitting the front faces of those trees. Now, when you're painting with light, green areas just absolutely love this and they work really, really well with it. So that's what we're doing here. So we're just hitting those front faces. And generally speaking, you know, when I'm doing this in the real world on a real project, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit closer and I'm gonna take my time. So just understand this is gonna be about a 10 minute tutorial. And this is something that I might spend you know, the best part of an hour actually doing in the real world. And in some cases, I'll even spend a little bit longer. In some cases, quicker. It just depends. Each image is different. And see what I'm doing? I'm just painting onto these front faces of these trees. And it's giving it that depth. And don't worry about the sunlight. That's all going to happen very, very soon. So see what we're doing there and this tree here should be kind of lit up a little bit and i'm going to light this up a little bit more because i want that light to kind of come through here and i'm painting onto that area see what i'm doing there i'm just lightening that up let's go around those edges and now i'm just overall lightening it and once again i'm working at much higher opacity than i normally would but this is going to work nicely Okay, so if we were to look at this now and see where we're at, here's before and after. Now we can see this light is starting to come through. Now I might have little patches of light hitting other parts of the image, like maybe over here. And I just hit the fronts of these some of these trees over here. So it could be, you know, just like different areas, little pulls of light here would be coming through this building. So let's just do a little bit more on the front there. So we've got this little area here be receiving a little bit of light maybe not so much at the back of them if anything let me just hit the x key for black if anything you probably get a little shadow on the back and you can paint those shadows in but well, let me undo that that's a little too much i'm going to drop that opacity down about 20 percent because the shadows definitely you'll get a lot out of a little bit of opacity with those shadows see what i'm doing there and i could even do the same on these areas now and start to paint in the shadows on the back side of some of these trees because what happens is when you increase the light or the intensity of that light you're also increasing the shadow so let's go here because that stronger light is going to cast more shadow so what we're doing now is we're painting the back parts of these so we're doing the exact opposite to what we did before but usually with the shadow i'm going to work at a lower opacity because a little bit goes a long long way all right let's go back Hit the X key again, get a little bit more of that light kind of coming in, hitting those forward areas, maybe little patches here and there. And let's go here. All right, so one of the things I want to do now is I want to add a little bit of warmth to this color. So as we can see here, we've got our light. So let's go down to the adjustment layers. We'll click on the adjustment layer, and now we're going to select Hue Saturation. Now this is going to affect all the layers underneath. We don't want it to do that. Let me just show you. If we change that hue, see how it changes everything. We just want to affect the layer directly underneath. So hold down the Alt or the Option key. You'll see this little arrow will appear. Just click. And now it's just going to work on the layer directly underneath and not the rest of it. So if we can see there, there we are there. All right. So what I want to do now is I want to add a little bit here. So we're going to choose our colorize option. We're going to turn up our saturation and you can see it's kind of happening just in the shadows. What we're going to do here is we're going to change this to a warmer color, but notice we're not seeing anything happening in the highlight area. And that's because our lightness is set this. So what we want to do is actually slightly darken it down. So as we darken this down, this now enables us to add color. See that? 
So we can go in here, we can dial in that nice golden color. Obviously that's way too much, but I just want to see it. And now we can take our saturation all the way down and just give it just a little touch. And what it's doing is it's just warming it up a little bit. So if we look at this before, this is our hue saturation. And after you can see how it's just kind of warming it up and we can see that. So what I also want to do though, is I want to boost this a little bit. So I'm going to add a curves adjustment layer. So let's just go into here under the adjustment layers and let's add a curves adjustment. And I want to clip this as well. So hit the Alt or the Option key, make sure that's clipping. Now, I just want to mention, you know, when I painted in those shadows, I generally would put those shadows on a different layer. So when then I add that color, it's not going to be added to the shadow. So I just wanted to just kind of mention that. All right, so let's just go here and we're just going to brighten this up a little bit and see what we're doing. We can really boost our sunshine now. And so if we look at what we had before, this is before and this is after. All right, so now we're starting to put some beautiful light in here. We're flooding this with light. I really want to up the ante though, and let's add the light source here and then let's have it hitting some of these different buildings. So I'm going to create another new layer on the top here. And you could add a lens flare or different types of things like that. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a brush. So I'm going to click here on the brushes. And if we go down, we can look at the different brushes. I have this brush set that I grabbed from Design Cuts. I'll give you guys a, a link to that underneath. And what I'm looking for is we've got this nice kind of a, let me change the view here. So let's change this view so we can see the brush tip. And I don't care about the brush stroke. I just want to see the tip. There we go. That's a lot better. And then we've got a flare here. And, you know, you can find these all over the web if you want, of course. And uh, but I'll give you a link to the specific ones I'm using. And I'm using the right bracket key to make this a little bit smaller. I want to take that opacity up to 100 percent. And I'm just going to click here and boom. What we're doing is we're adding this light. So this light's kind of coming through here as the sun's going down. It's kind of hitting those buildings there and flaring out. That looks good. You could also use the lens flare under here, filter. Uh, we can go under the render settings and there's a lens flare here that you could also use inside of Photoshop if you wanted. But I just want to use that custom one. Great. So now we're going to make this look a little bit more realistic. Let's zoom in. Because one of the things that would happen is if this light is going in here and it's hitting these buildings, in fact, let's just choose our light layer and we can just paint on there. So we want to just grab our regular brush again. A soft round brush. And make it smaller. And now what I want to do is I want to lighten up these areas here. That's a little much there. Let's go into our settings because I think size is on. Yeah, size is on. Let's make sure that opacity is on. Transfer, opacity, pen pressure and not size. And now we can just drop this down to about 20%. And now I can start to paint on some of these faces. Maybe let's take it up to 30 so we can do it a little quicker. And see how I'm doing as I'm brightening up these areas because the sun would be hitting these faces. Now, there's a better way of doing that, by the way. Let me undo this. I'll just show you. I probably won't do it for the whole video just for the sake of time. But if we grab the object selection right there and then we grab lasso, all right, so we could just go around here and we could make just quick selections around here. And what that'll do is just kind of protect the edges. So I could go in here and I could start to brush in these areas without going over the edges. In fact, I'm going to take this up to 50. I just want to really just warp speed this just to kind of get things going here. All right, so we've added the light, but this is not quite what we're looking for. Remember, I promised you sunlight. Let's add that sunlight right now. So what we're going to do is hide all the other layers. So we're just going to go there. So we're just looking at our image and then we're going to create a new adjustment layer. So go down to the adjustment layers and choose curves. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to drag in the middle here to brighten it up a little bit. OK, so that's giving it the light that's going to look like sunlight. But what we want to do is we want to give it an orange color. So go under RGB and here's the separate color channels. You won't see an orange, but orange is a combination of red and yellow. You don't see yellow, but yellow is the opposite of blue. So choose blue 
And instead of boosting the blue, we're going to pull it back. And this is going to give us a little more yellow in there. Now we want to add in that red. So let's go here under the red channel. And let's just pull this up a little bit to mix in a little red. So it's giving us a nice golden color. Sometimes it gets a little green. So we're going to go into the green channel here and maybe just pull that back a little bit. Depending on how it looks, you know, just uh, tweak that. And let's see what we've got here before and after. Excellent. Now, the thing is, obviously, we don't want the sun everywhere. So what we want to do is we want to completely hide it. So we're going to click here on our layer mask. And you can either go up here and you could choose invert or just hit control I and it would be command I on the Mac. And what it's doing is it's hiding the whole thing. Perfect. So now we're going to paint it in exactly where we want it. So let's grab our brush. Make sure we're working with white as our foreground color. Let's get a nice big brush. Great. And now let's just paint in where we want the sun to go. And look at this. Now we're adding this beautiful sunlight. Look at that. Make it a little bit smaller maybe and just get across the top of some of these trees here. So we don't have to go through and do all our dodging and burning again because we've already kind of done that. So we're just painting in the light. We want a little bit here. In fact, why don't I just push it all the way up to 100% opacity and we just got a patch of light hitting here, maybe some over here, maybe even a little bit landing over there and maybe some on the tops of some of these trees. So you can see what we've done here is if we look at this before and after we've added our sunlight. Now let's bring back all our other layers that we added in there and we're putting them all in. Now the only thing you may have to do is maybe adjust the opacity a little bit on our light layer if it's too strong. So we can just pull that back now and mix it with our sunlight. And you can see how we can go in here now and now we've got this beautiful scene. So if we look at this before and after, we've gone from a flat kind of an image to one with a lot of beautiful sunlight and highlights and different light all over the photograph. And essentially that is how you paint with light inside of Photoshop. So I'm curious, if you're watching this, um, if you learn anything new here, did this inspire you maybe to work on some of your own images? Let me know in the comments underneath. And by the way, if you're new here to Photoshop Cafe, welcome. You've come to a great place to learn Photoshop. Uh, consider hitting that subscribe button right now. Turn on all notifications so you know when I upload the new videos. So every Tuesday I do a new video. Every Thursday we do a live stream and every weekend right now I also upload a third video on back to basics in Photoshop. So anyway guys, if you like that, select the like button right now. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.